A trebuchet stores energy by raising a counterweight, which when released converts its gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. But what if there was a way to store this energy as kinetic energy before release, in something like a flywheel? Let's make a flywheel trebuchet. Unfortunately, my old trebuchet hasn't aged very well, and the plywood sections are falling apart. So I've decided to make this new trebuchet completely from aluminium. The frame will be built using these extrusions, which have a track built into them, allowing these nuts to slot in and clamp down, giving lots of flexibility for mounting positions. The frame design will be an equilateral triangle for maximum strength, which means cutting custom 60 degree angle plates to join the sections together. Once the two frame halves were assembled, the cross join extrusions could be attached with the 90 degree bracket, and it's already starting to look like a trebuchet. It's probably a bit overkill for this project, but with the extrusions being so adjustable, it can be reused for future trebuchet experiments. The arms are made from 25 by 50 mm rectangular tube section, as these need to be strong to survive the huge amount of force accelerating a tennis ball so fast. The official world's fastest tennis serve was 157 miles per hour. And to put that into perspective, this is my old trebuchet topping out at 124 miles per hour. So to beat the record speed, the 60 gram ball will undergo a centripetal acceleration of at least 265 Gs, which is equivalent of hanging a 27 kilogram weight from the end of the arm, which according to my stress analysis, can bend this arm by four millimeters at the tip. I then added bearings to the arms, which allowed the whole assembly to be mounted to the axle. With a small push, everything seemed to run smooth, but it needs some balancing. Instead of mounting another long arm to the opposite end, I decided to use a counterweight, because at high speed I expect the arm to produce quite a lot of drag, so having only one arm will reduce the amount of energy required to spin it. The balance isn't perfect, but it's far better, and I'll balance it properly once the flywheel is mounted. There's just one problem, I need a method of spinning it faster. So I 3D printed a pulley which mounts to the arm, then a timing belt can be used to drive it from an external source, and I mounted a secondary axle and larger pulley to the frame and using the slot nuts, the belt could be correctly tensioned. I could then attach a crank handle to the end of the secondary shaft and wind it up to speed. But first, let's build the flywheel. The flywheel was cut from 6mm thick aluminium, and it will have a diameter of 800mm. But because that's too large to fit on my CNC router, I've decided to cut it in four pieces. Each section can then be bolted to the arms to produce a large flywheel ring, and the unsuspecting opposition has yet to recognise the potential of this machine. So tomorrow we can attach the projectile slinging components and get on with the testing. Unlike traditional trebuchets, the projectile will be constantly moving with the arm, so it needs to be held in position until a trigger is pulled. This nylon strap is sprung loaded to clamp the ball in position and is attached to a small hook near the axle. To trigger this latch to release, I built this contraption that moves into the path of the hook as the flywheel rotates. So the trigger can be pulled at any point during the flywheel's rotation and the ball will always release at just the right time. And this release contraption can also be advanced or delayed by sliding it up and down on the frame to get the most optimal release angle. I then place the ball in the sling and attach the sling strings to the end of the arm. A trebuchet sling has two attachment points. One is fixed to the end of the main arm and the other is loose but it's hooked over this pin. Then as the projectile swings round, the loop slides off the end of the pin and releases the projectile. Time for a first test, albeit a slow test as I haven't made the crank handle yet. And, oh, I should probably pin this to the ground. It seems like all the weight of the flywheel pushed onto this pulley and has destroyed it, but nothing else seems to be broken. So we could probably give this Another test by hand. In three, two, one. <laughs> that actually went pretty far for the first test being so slow. <laughs> right, so I now have the crank handle on here and also I've fixed the pulley, uh, which is now half aluminium, half 3D printed. So we should be able to get up to some pretty high RPM. This slow-mo was filmed at 1,500 frames per second and has been slowed down 60 times. Using the length of the arm as a reference, we can measure that the ball travelled 1.44 metres in 22 milliseconds, 
So by dividing the distance by the time, we get a calculated speed of 65.5 meters per second, or 146 miles per hour, which is 22 miles per hour faster than my old trebuchet, but it's still 11 miles per hour slower than the world's fastest tennis serve. The fact that a human can hit a tennis ball faster than this is just insane. So today we are going to beat the world record tennis serve. I reckon the most optimal release point is when the sling is in line with the arm because then it's at the largest radius from the main axle. So what I've done is I've set the trigger to release the ball earlier, drop from the arm earlier, and then the sling to open up later. So it should have the same trajectory, but just hopefully slightly faster. I didn't even see where that went. Managed to snap the sling though. <laughs> I hope that went forwards. <laughs> wow. Let's check the high speed footage. Then I'll need to rebuild that sling. Right, so according to the high speed footage, the ball traveled 0 0.82 meters in 10 frames. So that's a hundredth of a second. That means it went 82 meters per second in miles per hour. That's 184 miles per hour. I think we need to redo that test and this time I'm going to make sure that my hand is completely off of the crank handle before the tennis ball is released just to prove that it's purely the inertia of the flywheel. At the point my hand stops applying power, the flywheel is spinning at 263 rpm and I know from my CAD model that its moment of inertia is 1.1 kilogram meters squared. From this, we can calculate the flywheel has a stored energy of 419 joules. That's equivalent to raising a 39 kilogram counterweight to the height of the axle. But this flywheel only weighs about 18% of that at seven kilograms. Once the ball is released, it leaves the sling with a kinetic energy of 132 joules meaning the usable energy efficiency is just 31%. However, the flywheel is still spinning with an energy of 79 joules. And I reckon if we increase the mass of the projectile, we can extract that last remaining amount of energy. That went high. Doesn't quite stop it, so we need to increase the weight a bit more, but it's getting close. Right, so this is now 180 gram tennis ball, which is about three times the weight of a standard tennis ball. <laughs> That's so weird to watch. At the point of trigger release, the flywheel slows to almost a dead stop in a sixth of a second, losing 99.5% of its energy. What's interesting about this is the flywheel on the left has twice the stored energy to begin with, but the projectiles leave the sling with almost the same kinetic energy. So the heavier projectile on the right is traveling quite a bit slower, but still launches about 20% further due to it being affected less by air resistance. Seeing as this flywheel trebuchet likes projectiles a little heavier than a tennis ball, Maybe I need to get some baseballs and stick a motor on this thing. But for now, I'm very happy with the performance. If you enjoyed the video, it'd be great if you could leave a thumbs up down below. If you're new to my channel and want to see other projects similar to this, then please click subscribe down below. And a massive thank you to all of my supporters over on patreon.com for making these projects possible. I honestly couldn't build them without your support. So thanks once again. Thanks once again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.